without any food. You can't go to the grocery store. You can't go to a ro restaurant. You can't even go to your favorite convenience store to get your favorite soft drink or hot dog. Imagine waking up every morning and having to hunt for your food because you can't just run to the grocery store and get what you want. This is probably very hard for anyone to imagine. However, farming, uh, sorry, agriculture has to do with pretty much everything you eat. But 1% of farmers in the United States today um, claim farming to be their agri uh, occupation. Uh, and farmers are 55 years, 55 years old or older. So what can we do to keep this important occupation alive and thriving? Well, we have a few farmers here today that are going to talk a little bit about what they do and what they can, what they can do to get more kids involved in choosing farming as their occupation. So first up, we have a bee farmer. Hi, I'm Maxie Rea, and I'm a bee farmer, and I live on a bee farm. My dad has been keeping bees all my life. Did you know that honeybees are responsible for one third of our food supply? Without them, we would starve. Managing bees is a very fun and interesting hobby. In the city, on a residential lot, you can have up to two hives. The time commitment is 10 to 15 minutes per week, except in the summer when you're harvesting honey. The finished product, honey and beeswax, can be marketed to friends, family, neighbors, and at the growers market for a decent amount of cash. Instead of using sugar to sweeten your tea or your coffee, you can use honey to sweeten it, and you can use it in baking. I encourage you to help me and keep our honeybees alive, because like I said before, honeybees are responsible for one third of our food. It is our generation's responsibility to keep the honeybee population thriving. Hi, I'm Randy Rea, and today I'm going to tell you about how growing flowers could be a fun hobby that could easily turn into a small business. I've been growing and selling flowers for as long as I can remember, and today I'm going to tell you guys how. Okay, so in the spring, I go to the store and purchase any kind of flower seeds I want. You could do zinnias, sunflowers, marigolds, any kind. And then I come home, and all you need is a 10, 100 square feet patch of dirt. And then you plant your seeds in there, and then you have to water them and weed them consistently. After your flowers are fully grown, you pick them and you can make bouquets. Then you could sell them to your friends, your family, the market, or stores, or just for your pure enjoyment. Growing and selling flowers is so fun, and I encourage young individuals to do it because it's a fun <coughs> hobby, and it helps you get involved in agriculture. Thank you. Hey, I'm a chili farmer. I will uh, farm chili. <laughs> it's amazing, but I've just got one question for you. Would that be red? Would that be green? I'm more of a green chili guy, you know. But I'm here to tell you about chili. Chili needs three things to grow water, dry soil, and tons of sun. Hey, we have tons of that. <laughs> now, you can help us farmers in uh, little ways. You could, maybe you could buy some chili, or you could maybe roast some chili at your local chili roaster. Or you could go totally hardcore and start your own chili farm. But why would you want to grow chili? Well, how about some New Mexico pride? Or it gives you some extra chili, or it gives you some extra money in your pocket too. And don't forget, chili is just good. Ugh. Yeah. Chili is just good. So, remember. Uh, <clears throat> remember. <laughs> chili, if you don't ask for it, you may not get it. That's New Mexico, people. Chili, we're famous for. Or are we famous for shaving your back for a nickel? Nope, nope. New Mexico is famous for the chili. <laughs> yep. So, uh, speaking of chili, I'm gonna go farm some. See you guys later. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sonia Crawford, and I live on a sheep farm. My family owns 400 acres of land, and we farm about 2,000 head of sheep on our land. You're really not supposed to have more than that because you can't have more than five sheep on your, on every acre of land. Most of our sheep are an all-white breed called. Columbia, and we use those for their wool. 
And we also have a herd of black-faced sheep called Suffolk, which we use for their meat. We also own seven herding dogs that help to keep the sheep together. Twenty years ago, my family started out with just five sheep on their farm. But as we bred and raised more, we were able to use our farm as our only income. My friends love coming over and helping me take care of my sheep. I'm always telling people at my school about my farm. Sometimes my mom picks me up in the truck with some, sh with some sheep, and we go to the elementary sh schools and tell them about sheep and how to shear them. The kids just love taking home handfuls of wool. In the spring, my, fa my family hires high school students to come and help shear the sheep and gather them up. I'm really looking sheep supplies so much for us, wool, hides, meat, and milk. I'm really looking forward to becoming a sheep farmer in the future and raising my kids on the farm as well. I hope everyone can see the benefits of becoming a sheep farmer in their future. God's creation is so amazing, and I love telling everybody about my part in it. Hey guys, I'm Jesse, and I'm a dairy farmer. So, today I was out in my field, you know, milking cows and all the fun stuff, when I started thinking about if I were to start a program to get city kids involved in agriculture, how would I do it? So while I was pondering this, I thought, why do I enjoy dairy farming? Well, I said, it's hard work, but it's also very beneficial. Like, it's nice to not have to go buy milk every day, and it's fun to make cheese. And generally, it's fun to make dairy products. Oh, and nothing's more satisfying than drinking a nice fresh glass of milk that you worked, like really worked for. I mean, standing there squeezing and pulling for hours a day isn't as amazing as it looks. But that's when modern day technology comes in handy. All I gotta do is put the machine up to my cow and electricity does the rest. But enough on how it's done, because that is not answering the question. How can I help get city kids involved in agriculture? Well, I thought maybe I could start this program where I could get a whole bunch of sponsors to donate some money and then I could breed a whole bunch of cows. And then I can get a whole bunch of schools to come take field trips to my farm where I'll teach them how to milk cows. Oh, and maybe I could write a book full of dairy product recipes that I can give to each one of them so they can learn to make their own cheese. Yep. And then maybe if they want, they can adopt their own cow with their parents' permission, of course. <laughs> it can be so much fun. Oh, and parents, it could take care of your weed problems. <laughs> uh, and when you want, your cow can make a pretty tasty dinner that'll last you a few weeks. Or if you love your cows like I do, they make some pretty fun pets. So now, in conclusion, I would like to help get your kids off the couch and into the fields. Thank you. <laughs> I hope that you have found everything very beneficial. Um, I am a grandson of a third, gen gen third generation farmer, and I love the farm. The opportunity it brings to being your own boss. I plan on someday being able to carry on that tradition, being a farmer myself, and hopefully raising my children to enjoy it as much as I do. So let's do what we can to keep agriculture alive. Thank you for your time.